Welcome to today's video on how to follow the single responsibility principle in Apex. By the end of the video, you'll have a pretty good understanding of the single responsibility principle and we'll learn how to follow it. But before we jump into the nitty gritty, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on more helpful content. Hi, I'm Simon and I'm a Salesforce developer at Smoothstack. Before we dive into the how, let's understand the what and why of the single responsibility principle. In essence, SRP states that a class should have only one reason to change. Each class or method should focus solely on one task. Following that convention will make life much easier for anybody who needs to enhance, debug, or even just read your code in the future. The first step in following SRP is identifying responsibilities within your code. All right, so before we get into all of the Apex, I'd like to give you a quick rundown of this error log object that I created. If you want a custom solution for tracking errors, then you'll want to create some sort of object called error log or something along those lines. And you'll want to create a field for the error code and a field for the error message, as well as any additional fields for other data that you may want to capture. I chose to create these two because they're pretty much the bare bones. You'll have some sort of error code that allows you to identify a little bit more about where in the code the error occurs. And then, of course, the error message will provide more specific details about what error you're seeing. So whenever you catch an error, if you're following this paradigm, you'll want to create a new error log. You'll want to set the error message based on the message from your exception, and you'll want to assign some sort of custom error code following whatever conventions you choose. Additionally, you could also have fields for maybe the class and method name that would provide additional helpful information depending on how you generate these. But after setting the fields, you'll want to insert the error logs. So here, this is pretty simple and we're going to be working with our update contact method from the first rest endpoint that we created. Notably, we did create an error log data accessor. If we want to look at that, we try inserting the error logs. We do have this catch block that just debugs the error message. We do this so that we at least have some indication that something's going wrong. If for whatever reason the error logs don't get saved in the system, our final line of defense is just going to be this system.debug. And of course we have a data accessor interface that we implement within the data accessor following along that uh, earlier video. And if you haven't seen that video and aren't familiar with data accessors, feel free to go ahead and check it out. But for most of you, this should look pretty familiar. And all we're doing really in this line is inserting those error logs. So if we want to go ahead and look at this in action, we'll swap over to our workbench. I've gone ahead and prepared a quick callout that uses our patch method and we we are using an external ID that already exists within the system and we're trying to update the email to test.com. We chose that email address because it is an invalid format. Salesforce requires you to follow specific formatting guidelines, and since this isn't formatted as something at something.com, it will 
not allow us to insert it. So when we attempt this, it should catch the exception and create an error log, and then we'll be able to go ahead and query for that error log to verify that it was created. So if we go ahead and hit execute, we do keep this raw response okay at, well, that's not exactly our time zone, but <laughs> it is now. And we're looking for an error log with error code 123-456 and there it is so we're seeing update failed and it's saying we have an email an invalid email address and that invalid address is test.com, which is exactly what we were hoping to see. And so this is advantageous because if you don't track your error logs this way, then you might end up with a situation where you bump into error after error on the back end and it impacts your data integrity, but you don't have any indication that it's happening. So if you follow a paradigm like this, you can audit the system more effectively and get a sense of where those errors are occurring. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at how we could clean up some of this logic and help it abide by the single responsibility principle. So if you're interested in watching this method transform from a fairly difficult to read several lines long mess into a much cleaner method, then feel free to join in the next video and follow along. Thank you for joining us in this informative video. Now equipped with SRP knowledge, you're ready to write more robust and scalable Apex code. Stay tuned for more Salesforce development tips and best practices. We'll see you in the next video.